I have been in the city for six days. Welcome back to another episode and today I'm getting out of the city. I'm sick of the city and I was about to get out of the city right after the strip which was like three days in and then my mom and dad decided that they wanted to come down and visit me so they rented an Airbnb and I stayed for a few more days since they're coming on the weekend. Today I have a few goals that I want to accomplish in this video. Number one, first and foremost, most important, get out of Las Vegas. Number two, get to Death Valley National Park. That's where we're headed today. Number three, I want to fill up on gas, propane, groceries, and water. I think that's all I need. Next goal, I want to clean up the van because I've got a lot of stuff laying around everywhere, which doesn't seem all that dirty, maybe to you as a viewer, but to me who lives in the van, I need to clean this up. Last but not least, I want to clean the solar panel up on top. So my plan today is to get out of Vegas and go into the city of Pahrump. I think that's how you say it, in Nevada. It's just on the border of Nevada and California, but it's got a Walmart where I can get my groceries. It's got a place I can fill up water. It's got gas stations, of course, and there's also a place I can get propane. As soon as I could, I got on the road towards Pahrump. I went through Vegas and it was actually pretty easy compared to what I expected. But after I got out of the city, the roads were windy. The van is like a giant wind sail, and with its bad handling, this combined to make a stressful drive. If you're familiar with this channel, you know my solar panel has flown off my van due to high winds before. Here's the old solar panel. As you can see, it is completely shattered and uh, unfixable. And here's the new solar panel. This only added to my worry. I'd be lying if I said that my butt cheeks weren't puckered right now. They're puckered. <laughs> They're puckered good. I'm nervous. I did pass some beautiful hills along the way, and before long I was in Pahrump's Walmart parking lot. From there, I organized my food storage and decided on what groceries I actually like needed to buy. Looks like inside my food storage, I've got two half boxes of pasta. That's why I gotta clean this stuff out, man. Look at all of this garbage that I will eat. That's not garbage, but it's garbage, you know? Dude, I forgot I even had these. I bought these on my last road trip. So in November, and it's like March right now. And here is what I want to make sure I have enough of this tuna and these little rice packets so i have five things of tuna left and i have three rice packets if you recall me saying before in that money video i want to make sure that i get as many groceries as i can at cheaper spots like walmart than i do at more expensive places out in smaller towns and since i'm at walmart right now i need to get stuff that is cheaper i also need white lithium grease because i'm sure you guys well maybe you haven't noticed in the videos but this door does not close easy there is a latch here and a latch on this side and when i close it it never catches like i have to do it perfect or it it drives me nuts so i think i need to grease up this latch on this side and might as well do this side while i'm at it because when i close the door this door will not close let's go get some groceries I legit got nine things of tuna because they were on sale for 78 cents. Now how about that for a deal now? Ooh, yes, sir. Okay, so this is what your boy got in total. Nine packs of tuna, two rice packs. Those are four meals combined because one of those will last me two days. Four cans of chicken, that it's like another eight days, seven or eight days. Pop tarts, white lithium grease, which is very important. Macaroni and cheese. Heck, this is weird. This is white lithium grease, right? <laughs> this is gonna get messy, guaranteed. <laughs> you know what? Why am I not using this thing? Oh, yes, sir. 
Get it all up in there. I think it's working. I don't know. Only time will tell. Look what I just discovered while I was wiping this down. I don't know if you can tell, but it wiggles. I need to tighten up them bolts. Luckily I have this set, but it's not that good of a set. Oh yeah, that bolt is loose. Look at that. Get that nice and tightened up. Hopefully don't strip it out. That's why I carry tools right there. Now, sturdy as a rock. Holy. Okay, that's enough of Walmart parking lots for days. That was a dollar and five cents. Nice. What are we at here? Oh yeah, 349. That is not even bad, honestly. $18.42. Okay, last thing I need to do before I can get out of the city for a while is get water. I gotta fill up my top water, the solar shower, because I've used some of that. Gotta fill up my drinking water, some water bottles, and then my like dish and cooking water. Just gotta get it all filled up, that way I can be out there for a while because I'll be in Death Valley for quite a while, I think, and there ain't no water out there at all. So I've gotta make sure I got everything I need. And then I'll be good. But we can get out there. This is gonna take forever, bro. Uh, this is a weird town, that's for sure. I forget, I also need to clean my solar panel. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of a difference at least. Gotta get that charge going, man. Oh boy. How long does it take to get a gallon of drinking water out? Oh. Okay, y'all, we've got a problem. I was filling up this water tank when this dish fell apart. So basically how this works is, I mean, this screws on the top right here, and then I attach this hose to that, which attaches to my sink and my pump down there, wherever it's at. So, yeah, and then this goes on the inside of it. <clears throat> And then this piece goes on the inside like that, down into the water tank. Well, believe it or not, Home Depot does not sell a piece of this with threads on the end that has the same threads as a piece like this, if you get what I mean. So to make it work is what I did is fill this with hot glue and twist it on so, while it was still hot to make the threads kind of work. Well, eventually that has now failed. So, as you can see, threads are off, and hot glue is not looking all that, all that hot gluey. We're gonna have to fix that today. I'm not really exactly sure how, but we're gonna get creative with this. Damn, have some stickers, bro. Sheesh. <laughs> that is wild. Okay. Home Depot time. $8 down the drain, but at least I can drink water. So here's my top piece, and I already scratched it up. You can kind of see around there. I've scratched it up with my knife pretty good. That way that JB Weld sticks really good. And then same thing on the inside, I scratched it up. And then on this piece, you can see I, <laughs> I went outside on the asphalt and scratched it up as much as I could. So basically, 
I'm gonna get a bunch of JB Weld and kind of put it around the inside of that the best I can. And then I'm just gonna stick it on there, let it set, and I'll put a whole bunch of JB Weld around the outside of it to stick in there. And then I'll cover the top up as well. That way the top is sealed, and then this bottom piece is sealed, and there should be no way that it can come apart because JB Weld is like a weld, it's permanent. What the? Oh, that's enough. That'll be enough. I'm supposed to stir them together for one minute. Make sure I don't leave any out of there. Okay. I'm sure, that's probably good. Now, get a big old wad of it and put it around the inside. I'm gonna have to make some more actually. Oh yeah, I got that pretty, pretty covered in there. Make sure I get it all swished around. Okay. Now I just gotta hold that for a minute. Okay, pretty happy with how that turned out. Finally, I got back on the road heading towards a place close to Death Valley National Park called Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. Okay. This place contains a desert spring or a whole bunch of springs containing some of the most rare fish in the world that are from the ice age. Believe it or not, I've actually wanted to come here ever since I was around 16 years old. I was super fascinated with the pupfish, that's what they're called, and ever since it's been a bucket list item to come here. So it's looking like this place is actually fancy enough it has a visitor center. Oh, better grab my keys. <laughs> Safety. Let's go learn about this place because I'm actually pretty, pretty dang interested in this. There's a big boardwalk down there, and uh, apparently the visitor center. So check it out. Learn some stuff about this place. Inside the visitor center, I watched a movie all about this place. Basically, Ash Meadows is an area where many warm water springs gurgle up from underground in this dry desert. What makes it super special is all of the plants and animals that live here. There are apparently 22 endemic species that live here in Ash Meadows. An endemic species is a species that only lives in one location. So there are 22 species of plants and animals that only live in these springs and around these springs. One of the main ones, and considered to be the main attraction is the pupfish, a little teeny fish roughly an inch long. They are from once giant lakes that were around during the ice age and have since dried up. The pupfish were forced to go to these little springs as the lakes dried up and this is all they were left with and they have survived here ever since the ice age. Pretty crazy. Behind the visitor center, a boardwalk path runs around some of these springs. So I walked out to them and it was windy as heck. <laughs> here you can see some pupfish. Really, they aren't much from this view, but I still find it kind of interesting. Those are some of the rarest fish in the world. That's crazy. So back in the 80s, they actually wanted to build a large subdivision on this place with strip malls and, and like the works. They were supposed to have an airport and around 30,000 homes. And they were gonna basically just tear this whole place down and basically put a whole city here. This is kind of crazy. And it was going to extinct a whole bunch of animals and fish and stuff, so they decided not to do it. There's a big debate over it, but before that they had used a lot of this water for irrigation and actually drained most of these springs all the way and it extinct, I think, a, some type of mouse and a fish, but now they've taken steps to, to fix it all up and it looks pretty nice. It's kind of crazy. This is the subdivision plan they had. Look at that. They've got like, let's see here. Real estate, single family, multi I mean, they had everything, man. Parks, agriculture, like that's, uh, even hotels. Like, look at that. That's, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> the wind and the low sun was making it really hard to see in the water and see fish for that matter. So I decided to come back the next day. Luckily, there's camping just outside of the wildlife refuge. So I jumped in the van and headed towards the camping. Oof. I 
it is bright out. And luckily there's a place to camp right outside. Sweet. I noticed a lot of people driving out here have uh, kayaks. And it makes me wonder what they're kayaking. Wonder if they're kayaking Badwater Basin because I know right now there is supposedly water in it. So that's pretty cool. There's a campsite for the night. Beautiful Death Valley. That is very pretty. It's time to get my water hooked back up though. I gotta get that done before it gets dark. Cause I don't wanna do it in the dark. But I am certainly sick of the wind, bro. Okay. Heck yeah. I would run it longer, but I don't want to waste water. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this day, and I will see you when it's time to cook dinner. Oh yeah. Pasta, pasta, pasta. That is the right, oh, that's not the right one. Believe it or not, it is actually kind of cold out today, tonight. Like, I had the door open as, as the sun went down, and I was writing in my journal. That's what I've been doing for like the past forever, is writing in my journal, because I hadn't done it in a while. But uh, I had the door open. Dude, I wrapped myself up in my blanket, and it, it, it wasn't warm, and I'm not warm right now. So it's gonna be nice to get this propane going and <laughs> uh, get warm. We got some more ground deer burger here which is absolutely delicious. If you have never tried deer, I recommend you go find some from I don't know where, but find it and eat it because it's delicious. I think I gotta taste test it. Look how good that looks, bro. Mmm, yummy. I love meat. I don't know. Tell me if you guys like meat too, because I love meat. Ooh, steamy. Clunk it on there. Ugh. <laughs> yummy. You can't tell me that doesn't look good. <laughs> then you just mix it in there and mm, you've got yourself some, well, deer meat stroganoff, but normally beef stroganoff or pork. I did pork last time. Pork's good. That's what I'll do from now on because it's cheaper. I just had deer meat. Before I eat, I want to contribute this meal to one, well, two things, but one thing kind of. I want to contribute this meal to my mother and father, who are the most amazing people in the world. You guys, there wasn't a plan until the night I walked the strip, but they decided they wanted to come down and come to Vegas just to see me. So they got an Airbnb down in Vegas. They came all the way down, five hours down to Vegas just to come see me. They rented an Airbnb that has a laundry machine and it has a hot shower and a nice bed for me to stay in. That way I could come and shower and visit with them. They took me out to dinner every single night and breakfast every single morning and brought lunch for me to eat and snacks the whole time. All the while taking me out to Valley of Fire again, which we went and saw together to go hiking. Red Rock Canyon, um, whatever that's called, Red Rock Canyon near Vegas to go hiking in. And they took me to go see a movie. They, dude, they, they did everything for me. So mom and dad, this meal and everything I do is for you guys. I love you very much. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna enjoy my... <coughs> I'm gonna enjoy my meal now. As usual. Conquered.
I'm in bed. I've brushed my teeth, cleaned up. Everything's good to go. I answered all of your guys' comments tonight. All of them. There's a lot. Which I love comments, by the way, so leave some comments. But, yeah. It, <laughs> it took me like an hour, bro, to just go through and answer comments from the last day and a half. Jeez. I, I love it. It's so cool seeing, like, connecting with you guys. I, I love it. For tomorrow, the plan is, of course, wake up, we'll get the day going, and then I'm going to take you guys along and finish exploring these springs, because they're super sick. Good night, everybody. I will see you first thing in the morning. <sighs> it's a little chilly this morning. <laughs> Oh, and that's the view I wake up to, baby. That's why I don't put window covers on when I'm out in the desert. Wake up to a desert view like that. Oh. facial hair again grow a scraggly little beard <laughs> I know it don't look that great but it's like I'm out on the road you know I don't have time to shave I'm on the road I don't know I guess you'll see anyways we're heading to a historic cabin a dude named John Longstreet I think is his name his last name is Longstreet either way but he had an old cabin out here at one of these springs and apparently he was like a hired gun so uh, like what's it, like a hired assassin or something like that I don't know but apparently his gun had like a bunch of notches on it for how many people he killed but he said he killed a whole lot of people and he lived out here in the middle of nowhere maybe he didn't kill as many people as I thought but still five people that's pretty cool Definitely a cool cabin, but this would be a depressing place to live. <laughs> There's not much out here. It said on a sign back there that, I would assume this, but somewhere in the cabin, there used to be a spring that came out uh, the top of this white mound over here and actually spring up in his cabin somewhere. So it, it used to come out of this big white mound up here and into the cabin. On to the next. The next place I stopped was a spring that was crystal clear. I grabbed my GoPro and stuck it under to see what was down there. These fish you see here are actually just invasive mosquito fish, certainly nothing crazy, but you can see how clear the spring actually is. This water is dated to be nearly 13,000 years old, or more like 13,000 years it's been underground. If you look down here in this shot, you can actually see some pupfish dancing around. The little blue ones are the males and the normal colored ones are the females. I don't, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see them down there. I was so happy to see these things up close, you don't even know. I 
I even stuck my camera in the stream below and there was some pup fish in there as well. This is a crazy looking shot. I love how this looks like a jungle, but yet it's in the middle of Nevada. See, it is Death Valley. I wasn't sure about it, but it said, dude, the sign said it's gotta be. But anyway, this is, uh, this is Devil's Hole. So this is what I wanted to see when I was 16 years old, 16 or 17 years old. Come see the Devil's Hole pupfish. It's one of the rarest fish in the world. It said that in 2013, their population dropped to 35 fish like that's crazy so this is one of the world's rarest fish right here we're about to go see it hopefully we can actually see them because <laughs> you've got quite a distance from them so i've got my 300 millimeter lens in my backpack and my camera plus some binoculars just in case so as i'm editing this video i realized that i didn't really explain what the devil's hole is so the Devil's Hole is a giant, giant cave system underground that has a freshwater spring bubbling up inside of it. And I think it's at like 92 degrees. So that water is like 92 degrees. And the cave is an unknown depth. So cave divers have dived in it before and they have not reached the end. They know the cave is at least 500 feet deep, but they don't know how far it goes after that. <laughs> Pretty crazy. But the craziest part to me personally is at the very top, there's like a little teeny area, which you'll see here in a second in the video, uh, that has water on it. It's 92 degrees, and there's this little teeny fish. It's about that big, called the Devil's Hole Pupfish. And the top of that water on a little limestone shelf is the only place in the whole world that that little fish lives. So uh, I'm editing the video right now, so you're going to see that here in just a second. So enjoy. They are not messing around here, holy cow. <laughs> Can you see him? <laughs> nope. Well, it's certainly not the coolest thing in the world, but... <laughs> It's a bucket list item, so crossed off. Although I can't see any fish, which I should expect because I mean, look at look at the situation, man. They're doing the best they can. But oh well, I saw where they live. I saw some other pup fish. I can be happy. Before I was all done at Ash Meadows, I decided to visit one more pool called King's Pool. And I'm really glad I did because there was the most beautiful pop fish and they're super close to the surface. I'm glad I went there. So sit back for a second, enjoy these underwater shots of the pup fish and just realize that these are some of the most rare animals on the planet and they are super fragile and this is just super crazy. So sit back and enjoy.
All right. Now that was a day. <laughs> I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. We did a lot in this video. Started in Las Vegas, drove through Vegas, out to Pahrump in the wind, got all that stuff done in Pahrump, which was time consuming. Drove out to Death Valley to Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, and here we are after exploring yesterday and today. It's been a long video, you guys. I'm sure it's gonna be gonna be quite the editing, but <laughs> I'll get to that later on. So I will see you all next week in Death Valley National Park on the California side. So thank you for watching. Go ahead and leave some comments. Tell me what you think about this video, and I'll see you all in the very next episode. Thank you for watching.